So yesterday, um, I did a response video to Groovy K's 2000s uh, videos he did on Sonic and Tails family trees. Basically, he did these videos about two years ago. And I made a suggestion at the end, and I figured, well, if I'm going to make that suggestion for him to try, I might as well kind of kick it off myself. And that is to answer the one major question. Now, I don't know if I've done a video on this already. If I did, I do apologize and consider this a bit of an update maybe if you want. But one has to really ask themselves, you know, this question when it comes to Mobius years later. You see, one of the pairings, shipping pairings in Mobius years later, surprisingly was Tails and Mina. Mina Mongoose, that is, or Mina Mongoose depending on how you pronounce her name. Now, originally, Ken Pender said that that was put in there as, you know, just a joke. Someone drew it in there as a joke to pair tails off with someone that no one would expect. Because, let's be honest, at this time, uh, Mina, uh, Mina Mongoose had just gotten over her crush with Sonic, it was now in a relationship with her stage manager, Ash Mongoose. So you have to wonder, how did she go from Ash to Tails? That's, that's the question. But, you know, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here to do. We're here to answer that question of how did that come to be? And I look at it this way. To answer that question, how did she um, end up with Tails? I think we have to look back at the, the present timeline at the time that the original Mobius Years Later stories were being published. You see, we have to go back and look at that. And at that time, like I said, she was with Ash, of all people, and Tails had a crush, or had basically reignited his crush and feelings for Fiona Fox. Because Fiona Fox was with the Freedom Fighters at that time, because obviously she felt, before Ian Flynn kind of changed all that, that she needed a change of pace. She wanted to see how things were a little bit more different on the side of good and such. Anyway, anyway, that's where we are in the present timeline at the time that this, these stories are published. So we got to look and dissect between there and then or there, yeah, there, I should say, basically the present time of when the story is published, to then, which is the future, Mobius years later, to see, you know, you know, to see exactly how this all came about. How did Tails end up with Mina Mongoose? Well, we can assume that a lot of things had to happen, right? A lot of things had to happen. First of all, first of all, we have to look at the fact that we have, we have to basically point out certain events. One of the first events is Ash actually sacrificing himself, nearly sacrificing himself to save Mina, which kind of makes Mina realize that despite the fact that she still technically had some crush and feelings for Sonic, that her heart now belonged to Ash because he was willing to pretty much put his life on the line to save her, to prove his love for her. So, we know that moment has to stay. That moment has to occur. But where does Tails come in? Well, with Tails, we have to look at 172, unfortunately, and Fiona's betrayal. Because this is where, basically, Tails has to uh, essentially start to get over his feelings for Fiona, even though, even though Fiona points out in a, in a Sonic, to, Sonic Universe Journey to the East part, which I think was part two, Fiona herself basically brings up the fact that, you know, as much as he wants to hide it, Tails still is hung up over her. In other words, he still has feelings for her, no matter, you know, what he'll say, or no matter how much he'll try to deny it. So we got to bring that into, into the picture as well, and we got to let these two events happen, along with the fact that we got to let the quarrel, the fight between Sonic and Tails and Heart of the Cards, 178 and 179, 
to occur as well. Why are these events important? Well, it's real simple. It helps all the characters, you know, have significant moments in their lives. I, you know, in their lives to help them move on to get to the point of, you know, them being together. So now that we're looking at all that, so now that we've kind of looked at all that, all those events step by step, you know, Ash putting his life on the line to save uh, Mina, to prove his love for her, so, uh, Tails having to start, you know, getting over Fiona after her betrayal, you know, the fight he has with Sonic in Heart of the Cards 179 and 178, where basically he admits that the reason he's been so angry with Sonic isn't just because of his situation with his parents, but mainly because Sonic stayed, you know, was dating and went out with Fiona when he should have known better, like he should have known that that would break Tails' heart because that's the woman Tails loved. You know, you know, we have to let all these events happen to start kind of trying to figure out and piece together the, you know, pieces of the puzzle to figure out how these two got together. Now, after these events have occurred, we move on. We move on to issue 200, the event where Eggman loses and basically loses his mind. Okay, we get to that event. That's good. Now, after that, you know, we have the Iron Dominion arc. What happened during the Iron Dominion arc? Well, we know, like I said earlier, Tails went with Sally, Sonic, and Monkey Kong, Ken Kong, to Eastern Mobius to dismantle the House of the Iron Queen, the Houses of the Bride, if you will, of the Iron, which are basically servants of the Iron Queen, which they succeeded in doing. And basically, they caused them to break away. Now, we also have to look at what happens afterwards. Because there are several issues after the Iron Dominion arc where Tails is not involved in the main plot with the characters, as far as I know. He's not totally involved, as far as I know. There are some stories. Now, I don't know if he's not involved with the story with Big, Sally, and Sonic, and the, uh, and the Wolf Pack, and the Cat Pack, or whatever they're called, uh, who are feuding with each other over this one emerald. We don't know if he's involved in that. Uh, if he is, I have to go back and look, but I didn't really see that. Again, just my opinion. Uh, so we know, so we know, like I said, there are some issues that he's not involved in. Mainly because of the fact that at the time he's also escorting... Yeah, he isn't really involved in this, I, I, as a matter of fact, because he, because in the other issues... He's escorting, you know, he's escorting um, Bunny and Antoine on the honeymoon, which is, takes place in Sonic Universe. So after that, he comes back, right? So after he comes back and, you know, Bunny goes with Sonic to another part of Mobius to see what's up there. What's going on with Tails? Well, we don't know, as far as I know. We don't really know what's going on with Tails, but we can assume that he keeps himself busy with his inventions, learning more on how to be a freedom fighter, stuff like that, right? Spending time with his friends, you name it. So, we pretty much know that Tails, you know, he's off doing his own thing after he comes back from, you know, uh, trying to give T Bunny and Antoine the honeymoon, if you will, escort them to his private island. But what about Mina? What, what is she doing at this time? Well, apparently, from what we could probably tell, from what we could probably tell, she is, I think, on tour. Yeah, she is on tour, as a matter of fact, because I think they do allude to that. She is on tour, and she's being escorted on tour by the Chaotix. You know, this way they can keep, you know, keep an eye on her, keep her safe, but also look for any suspicious activity by Eggman or whatever. You know, so she's being escorted by, you know, the Chaotix, if you will, as far as I know. But, now that we know all that's happening, all that's occurring, how do we get to Mina and Tails? How does this all happen? Well, 
Unfortunately, we may never really get an answer or at least a tease of a potential thing happening between the two because, of course, as we know, the book got retconned. We know the book got rebooted softly, hard, however you want to look at it. And we do know that Mina Mongoose, despite the fact that she wasn't a Ken Pender's creation, was wiped from existence. She's gone. So is Ash. Gone. But... But still, it makes fans speculate on how this could have happened, or at least allude to a tease in the Mobius years, you know, timeline of something potentially going on between the two, or, you know, leading to the two getting together. So, how, how do we look at that? How do, we, how do we get there? Well, if we take out the behind-the-scenes crapola, if you will, if we take that out of the equation, we could probably look at the fact that after the after Mina gets back from her world tour, and obviously, you know, she's had to heard what happened to Sally and everything, because, you know, we gotta go through the Mecha Sally arc. Yes, we do. We gotta add that to the to the list, to the timeline of how we get here. But Obviously, after she gets back from her world tour, and obviously, you know, after seeing Sally get rescued and restored and everything, the question is, where does, where does the journey begin? Where does the journey, the first steps to her and Tails being together begin? Well, obviously, there is something that occurs. I don't know you know, how they make it happen. You know, I don't know how they get to this point. But I think what happens is that Ash, I, I don't know how this would be written, but something tells me that Ash would be killed off. That's right. Like, he survived one time, right? Saving her. So, you know, you can't have him essentially survive twice. So I think what would have happened is this is where they would go. I think this is where Ian Flynn, I'm trying to put myself in his mindset. This is where I think Ian probably would have gone if he wanted to give a little bit of an idea of Tails and Mina getting together or even Penders. I'm trying to put my mindset. I know that sounds crazy. That sounds crazy to do, but I'm trying to put myself in the mindset of Penders and Flynn on how they would probably do this. And I think they both do a similar situation. They would, well, okay, maybe not similar situation. Let me correct myself. Okay. What I think would happen is with Flynn, you know, he likes to basically tease near character deaths. He likes to tease their deaths and all that, or tease the fact they're going to die, or pretty much kill them off. So with Ash, I think what he would have done, I think what he would have done is he would have had him be killed off. Like, okay, I let him survive once. I'm not going to let him survive twice. And I think they would have encountered uh, Eggman's army or Eggman's bots. And with Tegmina, Ash probably would have sacrificed himself elf, and been killed. And in the process, maybe have Mina promise him that he, that he, she will find somebody that will protect him just as much as he will put. Well, basically, I think what would have happened, like I said, is I think Ian would have had him killed off trying to protect Mina again. You know, instead, and while he's dying, I think Ian Flynn would have had him pro have Mina promise to find somebody that's going to love her and protect her just as much as he does before passing away. I think that's what would have happened. Knowing how Ian writes the books sometimes, especially pre-soft reboot, retcon, if you will, I think he would have done, I think that's something he would have gone. I think that's an area he would have gone to where he would have had, he would have had basically um, Ash sacrifice himself once again to save Mina, but this time die in the process of doing so but have her promise to find someone that's going to love and protect her like he did. Now, if Pendus was writing it, it might be something similar. 
but knowing how you know Penders is, we might have got something different too. Now, will we? Now, here's the thing: Would we have gotten you know um, Ash sacrificing himself, getting nearly blown up to save Mina, you know, like Ian had originally? Probably not. Probably not. You know. Knowing how Ken Penders writes, he probably would have had Ash be more of a jerk. Like to save Mina, he basically would cause, you know, a building to nearly fall on maybe some kids. And it takes Sonic almost at the last second to save those kids. And Mina would want to question, why didn't you, why, why didn't you save those kids? Why were you going to let them die? And Ash could use the, in his mind, justifiable excuse that, you know, she is more important to him, you know, her protection is more important to him, him than just those kids. So, so in Ken's, in, so in Ken's way, he could start forming cracks between the relationship where Mina would start realizing maybe Ash isn't everything she, he's cracked up to be, but, you know, she's still willing to give him a chance. You know, she's still willing to give him a chance and everything because he's his, he is her stage manager you know, his, her road manager, her stage manager, and he's willing, and he's done a lot for her, so she's willing to give him a chance. But over time, I think what we do, but over time, I think what we do is we start planting the seeds of, knowing how Ken Penders is, based on his writing, Ken would start planting the seeds of doubt. And this is where you would have tails come in. This is where I think he would have tails enter the frame. Okay, first of all, knowing Ken Penders, and I think he's even admitted this, he would have not gone the betrayal route with Fiona. He would have kept Fiona on the team. Maybe he had done similar stories to where they would question her loyalty, and to prove her loyalty, she would actually reveal certain things of her past and those that she worked with to help the Freedom Fighters get an advantage or be a step ahead or something. I think that's what Ken Penders would have done with Fiona. He wouldn't have gone the betrayal route, but he would have had them question her loyalty and have her prove her loyalty by telling them about, you know, certain people she's encountered so they can be ahead, a step ahead of them and ready in the near future. As far as Ash, though, I think Ash would have been the one he would have gone the traitor route with. That's right. I think he would have gone the traitor route with Ash. And again, the reason I say this is because of what I think he would have done you know, in Ash saving Mina and, you know, basically almost costing the lives of civilians, kids, if you will, where Sonic would have to save them at the last minute. She'd question why, and he would tell her, you're more important than them, which again would start bringing in the cracks, And but she would still be with him and everything because, you know, he is her, her role manager. He's taking care of a lot of things. And, you know, for the moment, he's proven to be, you know, loyal to her and true to her no matter what, or so it seems. And so it seems, but over time, knowing how Ken is, he would build upon that. He would build upon that by forming the cracks, for, forming more suspicion, you know, on Ash, because, you know, he would start acting a little bit more, you know, not just aggressive towards Mina, but more, you know, like, hey, I don't care what happens to anybody else. I'm protecting you. I'm protecting you because you're more important. And to me, this is where this is where I think, like I was saying, he would bring Tails into the equation. Tails would notice what's going on, try to, you know, talk to, try to wonder, Ash, you know, why are you acting like this? Why are you acting like a jerk towards the girl you love? Why are you, you know, putting people in danger? And Mina could be the peacekeeper saying, hey, it's okay, Tails, it's fine, don't worry. Uh, I know, you know, Mina could basically try to come up with reasonings, you know, excusable unexcusable reasonings that she knows, you know, are not right to excuse him for, you know, for why he, do, he does certain things, so he's doing certain things. Anyway, anyway, to get to the point, I think Ken would, not, yeah, I think Ken would basically start forming the cracks to the point, Tails would start noticing, because you bring Tails into the equation, you know, he's still questioning what's going on, Mina would try to be a peacekeeper, till eventually, Eventually, something happens, and that le and what that and what that ev eventual something is, is all of a sudden the freedom fighters, they go on these missions. 
to stop Eggman or try to, you know, shut down some of his bases and all that. And all of a sudden they start noticing, they start noticing a lot of the plans backfiring or they start noticing Eggman's, you know, ready for them and all the bases that they were going to, um, you know, get at are now nothing, nothing but traps because there's nothing there, but because everything's been moved out and essentially now it's just one trap to try to take them out. And they would try to wonder, okay, uh, well, not wonder, but they would start kind of, you know, putting things together that Eggman knows of the plans, but how? And they'd start realizing, hey, someone must be letting him in on things, but who? And, and for a while, knowing how Ken is, he would build again the tension as to who is leaking the information, who's betrayed the team. And again, this is where Tails would come into play. This is where Tails would come into play. And he would ironically, unbeknownst to Ash, find out that it's him, Ash, that is betraying the team. Well, be, not betraying the team, but betraying the Freedom Fighters because he's finding out information, he's sneaking around, finding out information about upcoming plans and relaying them to Eggman to be ready for. Now, I know you might say that's a little too convoluted, but again, remember, this is Ken Penders we're talking about, and this is how I think he would interpret Ash in, you know, in, if he was still writing the book. And, you know, how he would involve Tails and how basically that would start the pro Argus of him and Mina being an item. But again, like I said, I could see, you know, a scenario where Ash is revealed to be the traitor. How? Because again, Tails eavesdrops, you know, ironically and unbeknownst to Ash of him communicating with Eggman and then basically setting up maybe one of the biggest, um, I guess you could say, messages sent by Eggman that he can know of, of you know, within the city without even being there by trying to sabotage and, you know, hurt, if not kill, Mina. But again, you would wonder why Ash would do this and everything if he's so protective of her. But then we would also find out that he's not really been in love with her that he's actually just been using her for uh, to gain all this fame and fortune for himself. And now that he's accumulated enough fi financial, financial backing to last him for who knows how long, you know, especially also thanks to Eggman helping him out, supplying him with stuff, you know, now he can just be rid of what, you know, both agree to be dead weight in Mina and her band. And I think what would happen here is Tails once again would try to tell Mina and Mina would be like, try to brush it off saying that can't be true. There's no way he would do that. Only for Tails to basically reveal right before, oh, not right before, but during the concert, like when they take a break from a song and they want to show something and everything on the screen, Ian and everything, or Ash, you know, okay, this is what, all right. Let me rewind it. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is I think what would happen is, you know, they're going to go with the go on with the concert. And during a break, Ash comes on board, says he has a nice little surprise for Mina and everybody around for, you know, for the great job she's done and the support they've given her. Not And Mina and the audience not knowing that it's, basically a trap to blow them all up or hurt all of them, you know, um, you know, they're unaware of it. You know, just when Ash thinks, okay, he's about to, you know, show his true colors, colors by, like I say, sabotaging the whole event in front of everybody, you know, while he's on stage with Mina, does, like I say, hurting them, hurting her, whatever. That's when Tails you know, interrupts him and says, you know what? You know, you know, he basically, this is why I think Tails would show up, interrupt them, and reveal to the world Ash's true intentions. 
And again, if me and again in front of the world, in front of an audience, like Sonic and Sally could be there and all that. You can have Mina being like, Tails, what are you talking about? Why are you doing this now? And then you can have Tails point out a little something. And all of a sudden he could maybe turn on some kind of recording he had or whatever because he's been fought because ever since he's found out about uh, Ash's betrayal, he's been following him secretly unbeknownst to him and recording any conversation or hacking into any conversation he's had with Eggman. So, to get to the point, because I know it sounds like I'm rambling, I think what would happen is Tails would interrupt this special moment that Ash has planned for Mina and everybody and basically put the recording on or turn the recording on you know, so that everybody hears it through, let's say, the loudspeakers of Ash's betrayal to Eggman. And this, of course, would sadden Mina because she would look at him, be like, why? Why would you do this? This, of course, would get everybody upset with him, Sonic, Sally included. And then you could have maybe Ash trying to justify something along the lines of, well, you think this is, you think we're going to win this war? This war is endless. So why try to beat somebody like Eggman when you can join him? And then maybe you can have him reveal how he truly feels about Mina. Like, and besides you, you know, as far as you go, you know, you might be a talented singer and everything, but you're, but in reality, you're nothing more than a washed up Sonic fan and who I took advantage of to gain money or something like that. Or something like that. And yeah, it would be heartbreaking for her. And then for Ash, he, or he could think, well, he can even conclude by saying, well, I guess now the cat's out of the bag, or the mongoose is out of the bag. I guess I can bid adieu. You know, you know, I guess I can bid adieu. And just when it looks like he's about to turn up, about to set off, let's say, an explosive or whatever, nothing happens. And Tails then reveals that, oh yeah, by the way, those little bombs and stuff you were you know, about to set off, yeah, I disabled them, I disabled them, and then it's there, after that, where basically Ash realizes, oh shit, he's screwed, tries to get away, but he's stopped by everybody, and mostly, you know, he's not just stopped by everybody, like Sonic, Sally, Bunny, excuse me there, Jeffrey, because we know Ken would probably keep Jeffrey good, but not only is he stopped by Sonic, Sally, Bunny, and Antoine, on and everything, and Jeffrey and all them, but then we see Tails basically delivering, boom, the last punch right to Ash, knocking him out, and that's, but that's not all, I could also see Mina being like, you know, as he's about to deliver said punch, and knock him out, I should say, Mina stops him, Ash thinking, okay, she still cares about me, instead she nuts him, and then punches him, Basically, she knees him right in the you know what, and then punches him, knocks him out. And to me, as convoluted as I made it sound there, as convoluted as I made it sound there, that to me is when you start hinting. If you're Ken Penders, you start hinting at Ash and me, uh, not Ash, but Tails and Mina probably having something because you could have a moment afterwards after Ash is arrested, put away for a bit. You could have them have a little bit of a moment together. And you could have, you know, Mina thank him and then, you know, apologize for not believing him. And, you know, Tails being Tails, you could be, have him be like, it's okay, it's fine. I mean, I know you were hoping this would be the one and everything, da, da, da. And, you know, just before, you know, they kind of like, you know, go the separate ways or something like that. Or maybe just go out to have like a, a drink or something like that at Uncle Chuck's. You know, you could have, you know, you could have her give him like a little bit of a kiss on the cheek or maybe even a kiss on the lips, which kind of surprises him. And, and he'll be asking like, whoa, and he'll be like, you know, of course you have Tails a little shock, going like, like a little blushing or shock, like, you know, what was that for? And she could say, well, it's just another way of me saying thank you for being a good friend. And you just leave it at that. You just leave it at that. And then that's how you kind of hint at the idea of your Ken Penders that, yeah, these two are going to be together in the future. That's how you hinted it. Now, I know that sounded more convoluted than what Ian Flynn would do, because Ian Flynn, like I said, he would make sure Ash would die honorably trying to save Mina and have her 
promise something along the way of, you know, find somebody to love and protect you like I did, you know, which would lead to her being with Tails, at least hint at it. And, you know, you go from there with them. You know, you go with you know, from there with them. But overall, overall, those are basically, I think, the steps that would need to be taken from an Ian Flynn perspective and probably much more explicitated and overlapping, if you will, on a Ken Pender's perspective of how I think, you know, the steps would be taken, you know, to lead to a Mina and Tails uh, relationship um, in the Mobius years later timeline, depending on, you know, whose writing you believe is more um, accurate or more believable. Like, again, Ian Flynn's simple, have Ash sacrifice himself again to protect Mina, have him die in the process this time, but have him promise her to find someone that's going to love and protect her like he did, that you're hinting at her and Tails, and then, or at least alluding to that potential, uh, potential ability, and then with Ken, like I said, I made it sound more convoluted because knowing Ken it would be more convoluted, you have Ash be uh, a trader, basically be outed as a trader who's more interested in his own investments, basically, uh, in Mina, you know, you know, his own investment, which is own financial investment, which is Mina, not truly loving her or caring about her or anything, only caring about the money she brings in, but at the same time, you know, hawkering a deal with Eggman to basically betray the team for not just more money, but for maybe a higher position of power and everything somewhere on the planet, you know, maybe like in a casinoopolis or whatever, only to be ousted by Tails, who basically tells me about it, who tries to blow it off for a while, until finally the truth is revealed, as I mentioned, in what would have been a, a plan, a big old scheme by Ash to try to basically, you know, hurt everybody attending the concert, and even Mina, who's performing the concert. So, that, that to me, that to me would have been a more convoluted way for Ken to do it, but... Again, either way, either way you get to your point, you get to your destination, or at least you allude to that, allude to the fact that that's the, de the destination, either for me to say, uh, destination you want to head towards as you, as you get more, uh, you know, more closer to that timeline in continuity, whether it's an alternate timeline, alternate dimension, you know, a what if scenario, whatever, you're hinting more at that possibility you know, happening in the future. So, anyway though, guys, uh, I just wanted to come on here and talk about that, give you my thoughts overall on how I believe, you know, either writer would get to that scenario, you know, from point A to point, from point A to point B, whether it's Ian Flynn or Ken Penders. Let me know what your thoughts are down below, guys. Comment if you like. I got to get in the shower and get myself ready for work. I'd uh, love to hear from each and every one of you on this. Live chat, don't open mirror, like the video, super chat, super stickers are open during the live chat, as well as super thanks afterwards. Check me out at Venmo at Brian Warmer 2 and at Cash App at BW Roses 98. We could really help, we can really use your help in those areas right now. Also, check me out at Venmo at Brian, De uh, not Venmo, but Vimo, I should say, at BW Roses for content you can't get anywhere else. As well as check me out at patreon.com. It says BW Roses, $1 to go. Teespring store for merchandise you can't get anywhere else. And in my BW Roses Discussions podcast for audio, in all your favorite audio podcast locations except for Pando, from Pandora for audio versions of what you hear on YouTube. Until next time, guys, again, let me know what your thoughts are in Groovy K. Uh, hopefully, you're listening to this and hopefully, you'll take your time. And made more a little bit more um unscripted a little bit more scripted you know than i was and give my and give your thoughts on where you think you know you know where you think it could have you know where you basically think it all began that would lead us to a tales of mina thing in years later until next time guys let me know what your thoughts are down below again i gotta get myself ready and until then i will talk to y'all later